All right, so this isn't really attractive and shit, but I'm doing my best. Now I broke out. Hey, when have I ever had a clean face anyway? Now, this is a list of four different thesis statements from four different people. You got Grog, you got Far West Man, you got Van Robert Bright, and you got Candlelight Commentary. And I decided to compile them together because they were really interesting and in how they connect in a way. I thought, why not? It's not like there's anything special going on around in this section of the internet. There's some who's fucking who drama going on right now. But I don't give a shit about all that. I'm not high schooler. I go to YouTube because I don't want to deal with the drama of, I guess, outdoor socializing and the extroverted life. So why would I want that here, indoors, an introverted light in my fucking room? Alright. Starting with Grog. More choices are only good in that you can find the right choice. We all know that Grog doesn't have this vociferous and blind love of liberty and freedom the same way most people do liberals and libertarians and conservatives neocons at least because quite frankly choices can be quite overwhelming we know this to be true and having more choices isn't necessarily a good thing if you have more choices in what flavor of coca-cola you can have it's still coca-cola it's still not necessarily good for you or good for your well-being <clears throat> and that's generally seen as one of the core foundations of his views we have abundance or abundances of things we probably shouldn't have in the first place. Things that he'd say are damaging to the very soul. And I think people that have a very fascist way of looking at things would love the use of words like soul. He himself isn't a fascist. He calls himself a lot of things. Usually things that Moldbug would call himself. But that's besides the point. Like Jacobite, formalist, monarchist, tons of things. And it connects very well with what Far Westman says that there's too much choices and not enough order. But we have so much stuff that we basically put the burden of choice on. What do I want to order, for example, is something that always pisses me off. In my household, since the very fucking beginning, whenever my mom says, Hey, what do you guys want to eat? We always say, I don't know. Cause it's usually when we're ordering in. No one knows what exactly to order in. I mean, there's so many choices. Chinese food, Japanese food, Indian food, pizza. And there's like three different pizzas we can order in. Uh... What else? Dominican food. And in Washington Heights, definitely there's a lot of that. Now, abundance is ridiculous for ordering in. And there's not a lot of order in that. If you're basically to just cook, it'd probably be better have more order and we'd feel better about our results. Because usually, when they get Mexican food, I'm the one that's eating it but I'm not happy about it my little bro loves ordering that shit but he never eats it and mom's kind of pissed at him and it just leads to a bunch of stupid shit too much choice is not enough order to feel happier about what we get sometimes we shouldn't be presented with so much options and of course 
if you're gonna order in, it's probably not the right choice anyway, because whoever orders in health food, stuff that's stuff that would be made 100, 200 years in the past before food was industrially produced, doesn't happen. Doesn't fucking happen. Which leads into the third statement by my beautiful friend Van Robert Bryant, Heavens to Kadoka, Space Probe 7, whatever you want to call him, which is, you are miserable because you are free. Because there isn't this person that's looking out for you as you were when you were much younger, you're basically not as happy. I mean, there isn't that kind of magic, basically. Because we get older and we get to be more independent, and in that independence, we sort of lose sight of what really matters because we're so focused on having to do things for ourselves and oftentimes failing to do it the right way, that creates misery. That really does. I mean, we think of nostalgia Primarily in the fact that society is changing too much and too rapidly due to capitalism. So we got these 90s kids, 80s kids, early 2000s kids, 70s kids, 60s kids, 50s kids. 40s kids? Nobody gives a fuck about the 40s. At least nobody that doesn't mean shit. <laughs> So you are miserable because you are free. That really is an interesting statement when you look at it. Because you are more independent over time, that independence makes you feel like shit. Older people that are basically in the care of either the government or more likely friends, kids, their children or offsprings or they're taken care of more often by somebody. This is usually the portion of their life where they've thought about it and you know what, they're ready to go. They are fucking set to go. There are no regrets. So though some people have a nasty time when they get that old, but I don't want to talk about that. I just want to talk about how... Uh, as they're being taken care of, uh, there is this feeling that's coming back. And this leads to what's this kind of like commentary statement, which is, life is misery and misery is good. Guess what? If life was devoid of misery, people would be consuming themselves. You take a jar of flies and you put too much food in it, people or the flies inside a jar start having too much kids, essentially overproducing, starving themselves and getting themselves sick. And that's kind of what's happening with our society nowadays. It's not really sustainable. We're in so much debt. We're not producing enough. We're consuming ourselves. We are in the first world, a jar of flies. Yeah, it's my favorite album from Alice in Chains, so it's it's an extended play text technically. But it's pretty good. So misery is good. Misery is good in that because you are suffering, you are not overproducing. It kind of connects to my past two videos or two videos ago where I said that depression has a role. You take antidepressants and you notice people that take Prozac will eventually go ahead and do stupid shit like what happened with Sandy Hook. A lot of these mass murderers were on antidepressants because antidepressants take away depression. What does depression do? It demotivates. It demotivates from doing stupid shit. Now that you're motivated to do that stupid shit, because you're not depressed anymore, you're going to do it. It's not like 
And that's kind of explains why there's a rise in suicide and antidepressants can cause suicide because it's not that taking the antidepressants is going to make you not want to kill yourself. It's going to make you have the motivation to fulfill that desire that your brain put you in depression to prevent. I know I'm driving you in circles right now, but I think I've confused you more, but don't worry about it. In other words, choices are only good when you make the right choice. Definitely. If you, I'd rather have two smart decisions available over 100 stupid decisions. And since we have too much decisions in general, and they might be okay choice, but there's not enough order stemming from it. And I have this abundance, but there's no really way. There's not a way of organizing ourselves so we're happy with that abundance, and the ability to have that those choices and that responsibility that we're not happy with makes us miserable. We are essentially miserable because we are free. But don't worry if you're not, because misery in a way is good too. If we weren't miserable, we would consume ourselves. I deal with a lot of weird people, I just realized that. But all this stuff connects very well. These are some brilliant guys and Shout out to them. It's a good video. It's Mr. Wonka 7 and Suck My Dick. Um, I'm saving the script.